Hello and welcome, dear Kid Lifers. I am so excited to be with you today on our very first day of November. And why, may I tell you, is because we are here to celebrate your very special day. Starting today and all the Sundays of November, we are going to celebrate Children's Day! Yay! So exciting, kids. And uh, we praise God for each and every one of you. And we want you to enjoy your identity in Christ. And so, kids, we want you to sit back and relax. Okay? That's right. Happy, happy Children's Day to all our kid lifers and kids out there. This month is special, just made for you. And this month also we have a very, very, very special theme. Right, Chill? Yes, of course. It's called Identity. And Teacher Aika is here to tell us more about it. So let's listen to her, kids. Hi, kid lifers. Happy Children's Day. Remember, you are loved by the Lord and by us, your GCF family. Okay. Are you ready to discover and know what the acronym of I-D-E-N-T-I-T-Y means? We will only take up two for the day, okay? So first is I. I is for I am a child of God. 1 John 3, 1 tells us, See what kind of love the Father has given to us that we should be called children of God, and so we are. The reason why the world does not know us is that it did not know Him. Here's Mommy Jenny to tell you more. Happy Children's Day, dear kids! Yes, as Teacher Iko was saying in 1 John chapter 3, verse 1, is that God the Father has loved us and called us His children. And we are God's children. Because of that personal relationship we have with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So when we talk about identity, we talk first about who we are in God, which is, I am a child of God, you are a child of God. It's like God's DNA in us. Wow, isn't this amazing? Also, because we are children of God, our identity in Christ causes us to delight in worshiping God. That brings us the letter D, delighting in worshiping God. Our hearts are overflowing with, with love and joy and praise in adoring God for who He is and what He is. Psalm 43 verse 4 says, Then I will go to the altar of God, to God my exceeding joy, and I will praise you with the lyre, O God my God. Let's celebrate and praise the Lord for children. Kids, you are a blessing from the Lord. Here is an awesome praise song from the Singing Ambassadors, Unstoppable. Happy Children's Month, Kid Lifers! Isaiah chapter 54 verse 10 says, Though the mountains be shaken and the hills be removed, yet my unfailing love for you will not be shaken, nor my covenant of peace be removed, says the Lord who has compassion on you. Kid life first indeed, nothing can separate us from the love of God. His love is consistent, eternal, and unconditional. That even if we are incapable of being consistently good and loving, God's love never fails, never changes, and is simply unstoppable. Let us all stand and worship our God, for He is great and mighty. His love endures forever. So let us sing this song together. Feel the waves in every day. 
God is here, watching over us. Feel the call, come one, come home. We must go and share the love we know. One love that is perfect, that is holy. It's all unstoppable, unstoppable. GCF Kids Live Little Ones. I'm Teacher Tina. I'm very happy to be able to bring you today's lesson um, and our story a little bit later. But now let's begin with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for today. Lord, I just thank you for the communication that we could have even so far apart. Lord, I pray that uh, this lesson would teach us more about you, Lord, and how much you love us. In your name I pray. Amen. All right. Well, I hope you guys are having a good week. And I hope you have liked and subscribed to Teacher Angel's Facebook page and the YouTube channel so you can get all of the different activities uh, and things to do throughout the week. Later, another teacher will do your craft with you. So I hope you've prepared all the materials you need and hopefully not make too big of a mess for mommy. To, but of course, you'll help clean, clean it up, I'm sure. All right? Today, I want to talk to you about Jesus and what does he think about little children. All right. So if you guys remember, Jesus had disciples. And these disciples are people that he taught while he was on earth. So do you guys remember how many disciples Jesus had? There's more than one, right? More than two. There was 12 of them, all right? There's 12 disciples. And there's Jesus, okay? And so these guys would follow Jesus everywhere he went. Where he went, they went. Where he slept, they slept. And so he taught them all day, every day, for three years while Jesus was on earth. Right? Now, I have a question for everybody. Was Jesus important? Was he an important person? Yes, he was. Was Jesus the president of Israel? No, no, he wasn't. What, what made Jesus so special? What made Jesus so important? Because he looks just like everybody else. Well, we, this is, we don't really know what he looks like, but we do know he looked normal. He looked like everybody else. What made Jesus so special and so important? Well, for one thing, Jesus was God. Jesus came from heaven and was born to Mary in the stable, you remember the story of Jesus being born in the stable of Bethlehem? Because he was God. God who put on and became human. Okay? So this is very important for you to remember. Jesus was not just a man. Okay? 
He had eyes and fingers and toes just like you and me, but he was also God, which means he is more important than anybody in the whole world because he made the world. Okay? So think about the most important person you can possibly think of. Jesus was more important than them because God, Jesus, made those people. Okay? So here's my next question. If God, Jesus, God in the form of Jesus, was here on earth and spending all this time teaching his 12 disciples, do you think he was a busy person? Do you think he had lots of things to tell these 12 disciples? Yes, he did. Because after Jesus was crucified and buried and rose from the dead and went back to heaven, those disciples went and told people all over the earth about Jesus. So they had a very important job and Jesus needed to teach them and train them. So Jesus is so busy and he's a very important person. And that is where we're going to start our lesson today. If you go to the book of Mark, Mark chapter 10, verses 13 through 16. People were bringing little children to Jesus to have them touch them, but the disciples rebuked them. So what happened was, all these parents, they brought their children to Jesus and they said, Oh, Lord, will you please bless our children? Right? Because God will bless them. But the disciples, they said, No, no, you stay away. Jesus is a very important person. He needs to teach us. He does not have time for children. Now, here's my question. What do you think Jesus did? Do you think he sat there and said, You're right. I'm a very important person. You leave me alone. Don't come here. You stay far, far away. Do you think that's how Jesus felt about children? Or, do you, or what do you think? What do you think Jesus did? All right. Let's find out in our next verse. When Jesus saw this, he was indignant. That means he was angry. Galit Neshach. He said to them, let the little children come to me. Do not hinder them. In other words, don't stop them. You let them come. For the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. I tell you the truth. Anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. And he took the children in his arms, put his hand on them, and blessed them. So, Jesus did not chase away the little children. No. He gathered them up. He hugged them. He blessed them. He prayed for them. So, if the most in important man in the whole world because he was God, because he made everything. If he was not too busy to hug and love the kids, what do you think that means? Does he like the kids or hate the kids? Jesus loved the children. Remember our song, Jesus Loves the Little Children? Do you know why Jesus loves you? Because he made you. Each and every single one of you. He made all of your fingers and all of your toes and your noses and your eyes and your ears and your mouth. Everything about you, he made. And you are special because there's no one else like you in the whole world. All right? So if you are ever scared and you think, oh, no, I can't pray. God is too busy for me. Is that true? No. You can always pray to God. Say, Lord Jesus, I'm scared. Or Lord Jesus, please heal Lola. Or Lord Jesus, help my tummy to feel better. You can always talk to the Lord because he loves you because he made you. Okay, so I want you guys to remember that. That you are precious in his sight and that he loves you. All right? So let's talk about our memory verse for today. <gasps> I closed my Bible. Now I lost my place. So in Matthew, Mark, let me go back to Mark, chapter 10, verse 14. Okay, Mark 10, 14, it says, When Jesus saw this, he was indignant. He said to them, Let the little children come to me and do not hinder them. Okay, so let us practice that verse. Let's make it nice and easy so that we will remember it. All right? So Mark 10, 14. That's a little bit hard. Maybe we should say Mark 10, 14. You can practice whichever way you like best. But you can remember Mark 10, 14. It says, let the little children come to me. 
All right, so let's do our actions. We always like our actions. If you want to say let, like come in, you can come in. That's how we'll use it, right? Let the little children, right? Because they're all little, so we got to do little heads, right? One day, we'll, you guys will all be big, but little children are always little. So let the little children come to me, right? So we can practice that. Mark 10, 14. Let the little children come to me. Okay. I want you guys to practice that, remember that, and whenever you are worried or scared or you're not feeling well or sometimes you just want to say thank you Lord for loving me, you can always talk to the Lord. I want you to remember that. All right? And so now your other teacher is going to do your craft with you. I hope you guys have a great time and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Hey kids, today we're doing something really amazing for our craft. So for our craft today, you need a pair of scissors, a box of crayons, and the printed cutouts, which you can ask your parents to print for you. The first thing you have to do is you have to color everything. And also here, the dotted lines over here. Let's go! Now we're done cutting and coloring. So what we have to do next is we have to get this paper and we have to fold it in half. So we have to fold it. Then you have to fold it another time. Oops. Careful to make it straight. There you go. Afterwards, remember the piece you cut? Here. You have to just insert this inside. You turn it around and then insert it inside the hole. Oops, look what happens. There you go. Yay, let the children come to me or also go. There you go, yay. Also, you can cut this if you want this line so that it would just be this part. So yeah, that's your craft for today. Hope that you enjoy the crafts. Bye. Yes, welcome back, dear kid lifers. Are you enjoying your special day? Just sit back and enjoy a bag of popcorn as you watch kids' life. Okay, we will now play a game. Do you know how to play the game that's coming on our screen right now? Okay, so this is a map or bed of letters and numbers. For today, we want you to look at these letters and see if you can get it right. It's all about our identity in the Lord. Okay, here's the first one. I am D2, A5, B3, B2, D2, E3, A3, A3, A2, and D3, D1, E2, D5, A5, B2, D2, E3, A3, A3, A2, main. Okay, that's for now. Have fun finding out what is that and message us OK on Kids Life Messenger, OK? or email your answer to kidslife at gcf.org. Thank you. Do you answer it at once and send it? Who knows, you might get a prize for the first three kid lifers who get to answer this. Wow! Kids, did you have fun with that? I sure did myself. By the way, happy Children's Day to all of you kids. 
Here is Teacher Muriel to pray for all of you, and then we proceed to the lesson to be brought to you by Elder Bonnie. Watch and learn, okay? God bless you all! Everybody, my name is Teacher Muriel, and I teach the age 6 at 8 o'clock in the morning in GCF Sunday School. It's such a privilege to be here with all of you, especially to pray for our little ones, our kids' lifers. So today, uh, we'll be praying, uh, dedicating time in prayer and worship for our kids. It's so important for us to do that because it says in Psalm 127, verse 3, that children are a gift from the Lord and they are a reward from Him. So please join me in prayer as we uh, dedicate this time for our kids. Almighty and everlasting God, we thank you, Lord Jesus, for this privilege that you have given us. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for always being there for us, whether through good times or through bad times. And most especially, Lord Jesus, thank you for providing a way for us to meet online during this pandemic, Lord Jesus, when we can't really meet each other face to face. At this time, Father God, Lord Jesus, we want to offer to you in prayer our kids' life first, Lord Jesus. We praise and thank you for what you've done in their lives, for being with them and guiding them. We also thank you, Lord Jesus, for providing for them everything that they need, Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for always being with them, especially now that they're going back to school online. Lord Jesus, we thank you for their parents, for everyone who's supporting our little ones, Lord. Especially, Lord God, our teachers in their own respective schools and also our teachers in the Sunday school here at GCF. Lord Jesus Christ, we praise you and we thank you. Lord, we just want to lift up to you, Lord Jesus our children uh, from ages one and above, everyone who has been connected with each other, Lord Jesus, everyone who misses each other uh, and seeing each other through our Sunday school classes, Lord. I know that our children, the kids' lifers, Lord Jesus, miss going to Sunday school and seeing their friends there and their teachers and learning about your word, O Lord God. May you always let this um, feeling be alive in them, Lord Jesus, especially now that we are staying from home and we are not going um, outside. Lord Jesus, we pray for our kids. We pray for their protection. We pray for their health, their safety. Lord, we pray for their focus when they're going to school online. We pray that you will protect them, Lord God, from any distractions and also disruptions as well, Father God, due to um, slow internet connection or perhaps uh, distraction because there's a lot of things going on in the house. Father God, may you be the one to provide, Lord God, the focus and encourage them to finish well in their studies. Bless the projects that they're doing online um, as they work together with other kids in their class or even their teachers. And Lord God, may you please give them the strength and the patience to finish their work, their assignments, and their projects. Lord Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus, we dedicate our kids to you. We dedicate the kids' life first, Lord God and everyone involved in discipling them, teaching them God's Word, Sunday after Sunday, and even during the weekdays, Lord God. We lift up to you, Lord God, the spiritual growth of our children, and also, Lord God, their knowledge of you and who you are in their lives. We dedicate them to you, O Father God, we lift them up to you. We also lift up to you their parents who takes care of them and um, disciples them on a day-to-day -day basis. Their 
kasambahays and also uh, the people that help them um, make their day better and organize their day inside the house, Lord Jesus. May you please bless them, Lord. May you please continue to give them the heart of um, encouragement and joy whenever um, they help our little ones organize their day, Lord God, especially in school, in online classes. We just want to thank you, Lord, for this time. We thank you for opening up this opportunity of devotion and worship to you. And we thank you, Lord God, for giving us the opportunity to impact and uh, be a role model to our kids' life first, Lord Jesus. We thank you for our um, teachers, Lord God, in GCF, and also our director and head of the ministry, Teacher Angel, Teacher Rafi, and Teacher Reniel, Lord God, who work together, who always non-stop um, produce the videos and also the content of our um, online uh, activities and worship during Sundays, Lord God. We thank you again, O Father God, because you are our provider, our good shepherd, and always being with us through this difficult time. Thank you for answered prayers, O Father God, especially um, the health of God. We've always been praying for him, Lord God, and may you continue to heal him and be with him, encourage him, and encourage his parents as well and his family. In all of this we pray in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you so much for praying with me and God bless you all. Kids, good day to all of you. Welcome again to Kids Life. I am Teacher Bonnie who will be teaching you about 1 John 1, 1 to 4 and 5, 13. So please open your Bibles to 1 John 1, 1 to 4 and put your finger on the page for 1 John 5, 13. Let us read together. 1 John 1, 1 to 4. I will be reading from the New American Standard Bible. What was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked at and touched with our hands concerning the word of life. And the life was manifested, and we have seen and testify and proclaim to you the eternal life, which was with the Father and was manifested to us. What we have seen and heard we proclaim to you also, so that you too may have fellowship with us, and indeed our fellowship is with the Father and with the Son, Jesus Christ. These things we write so that our joy may be made complete. 1 John 5.13 These things I have written to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, so that you may know that you have eternal life. It is perhaps a coincidence maybe even intentional, that the subject matter for today's study of God's Word seems to be asking us to identify an important person, which jibes with this month's theme of identity. In fact, it was written to tell us all something very important. Remember that the Bible does not hide anything. The Bible actually reveals to us what God wants to tell us. And in this particular case, he is going to reveal us about a, a very important person in our lives and what he did for us. So, point number one. What or who was it that is being referred to in verse 1 of 1 John 1? I'm going to read that verse again. What was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked at and touched with our hands concerning the word of life. My first question in this verse was, what were all these relative or demonstrative pronoun what mentioned in this verse? You, you see, when you study the Bible, you actually look at 
how it is written, what words were used. And in this particular case, in the first verse alone, we see the relative and demonstrative pronoun what mentioned how many times? Four times. What does all these what's stand for? So I observe what these are asking about. First, what was it that was from the beginning? What was it that they heard of? What was it that they actually saw? What is it that they have actually looked at and they have touched with their hands? What was it concerning the word of life? Another question is, who were they? Also, what does the word life mean? We will answer these questions from the Bible itself. Of course, one of the they is the writer of the letter himself, who was not identified in, 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 the, in the writing itself, but the style of writing and the knowledge of the writer of what was happening, and as a live witness at the time, pointed only to John, the son of Zebedee, brother of James, who were both apostles of Christ, as the writer of both the letter of First John 1 up to 3, and the gospel according to John, and the book of Revelation. This has been even agreed by the early fathers of the church. So the they in the verse must be the companions of John, whom, as we can see in other books in the New Testament, are called the disciples of Christ, which means his followers, learners, pupils. But the verse continued that the what that they were talking about, the one from the beginning whom they heard, saw and touched concerned the word of life. In 1 John 1 to 2, we read, In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. You know the beginning? Well, actually, beginning of eternity. Actually, eternity doesn't have any beginning or any end. It's something very vast. We no longer, uh, it's so difficult to understand because we're used to using watches, our watches. So in eternity, there is no time. But it is said that he, the word, was with God in the beginning. From this verses, we can now answer some of the questions we had about the pronoun what in 1 John 1. First, what was it from the beginning? In the beginning was the word. Well, this adds another uh, dimension to what we're studying. The, because we are now studying what is the word that was in the beginning. So there's another question. In the same verses in John 1.1, 1, 1, it says, And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. So not only is the Word a person who was with God, the Word of that person is said to be God Himself. Wow. God Himself. The word Word in Greek is Logos which was how the New Testament was originally written, meant something said, including the thought, by implication, a topic, subject, or discourse, also reasoning, the mental faculty or motive, by extension, a computation, specifically with the article in John, the divine expression that is Christ. So the word is the divine expression that is Christ. In John 1, 14, we further read, And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we saw His glory as of the only begotten from the Father, full of grace and truth. This verse answers some more of our questions. 
What was it that they heard of? What was it that they've actually seen? What is it that they've actually looked at and touched with their hands? Because the Word actually became flesh, meaning He is the Word who became human. He is God who became human. He lived among His people, and His people saw Him, even His glory, glory as the, of the only begotten from the Father, full of grace and truth. Do you know why Jesus Christ became man? He was so comfortable in heaven. But he became man so that the people, the chosen people of God, the Jews, would be able to mingle with him, see God himself without dying. Because if you look at God and uh, in his full glory, surely you will die. But Jesus Christ became man. But he has a purpose why he became man. Not just to come over here, but he had a purpose. In John 3, 16 to 17, we read, For God, this one you know very well, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. But verse 17, we continue, For God did not send the Son into the world to judge the world, but that the world might be saved through him. So you see, uh, it was the only begotten Son of God whom He sent to this world because of His, that is God's love for us, so that those who believe in Him, His Son, shall not perish but have eternal life. What a wonderful message. In many parts of the Bible, we can also read that the people then, even the devil himself, acknowledge and knew who Jesus Christ is, and he was the Son of God. In Luke 22, 68 to 70, we can read verse 68, and it says, uh, Jesus Christ is the one speaking here, and if I ask a question, you will not answer. But from now on, the Son of Man will be seated at the right hand of the Father of God. And they said, Are you the Son of God then? And he said to them, Yes, I am. Letter B. What was it concerning the word of life? In verse 2 of 1 John 1, we read, Concerning the word of life, and the life was manifested, and we have seen and testify and proclaim to you the eternal life, which was with the Father and was manifested to us. Since we now know that the Word is the only begotten Son of God, who is Jesus Christ our Lord himself, we know that he is the Word of life, because in him was life, eternal light. In John 1, 4 we read, In him, that's Jesus Christ, was life. And the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. John eleven twenty five. we read, Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live, even if he dies. Jesus is life. He is the resurrection and the life, meaning Jesus can give eternal life if we truly believe in him. And he alone can save us from the darkness because he is the light of man. 1 John 5.11 says, And the testimony is this, that God has given us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. Now, some questions. Now I ask you, who was with the Father in the beginning? His only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Who was it who became flesh and manifested or showed himself to those people? 
Yes, you're right. His only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. And who was it they saw? And who they proclaim is the eternal life? His only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. And who is it who can give eternal life? His only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us see. What did John and the disciples announce and declare to us so that we may have fellowship with them and the Father and His Son, Jesus Christ? I'm going to read again verse 3 of 1 John 1. What we have seen and heard, we proclaim to you also, so that you too may have fellowship with us, and indeed our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ. The disciples proclaimed or announced to other people what they have seen and heard, and that is our Lord Jesus Christ, so that those who have heard or have believed may have fellowship, which means in the original Greek, the word used was koinonia, which means partnership, participation, fellowship, being together, a communion with the Father and his son Jesus Christ meaning we who believe became children of God this too is what God wants us to do and that we are commanded to by Jesus Christ himself when he said in Matthew 28 19 to 20 just before he ascended and we read go therefore and make disciples of all the nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Point letter D. Why did John write this letter to the disciples and believers? Let me read again from 1 John 1. And then I will proceed to 1 John 5, 13. Verse 4. These things we write so that our joy may be made complete. And verse 13. These things I have written to you who believe in the name of the Son of God so that you may know that you have eternal life. John wrote this letter to believers in Christ to proclaim the incarnation of the only begotten Son of the Father, who has given us eternal life, the true light of man amidst the darkness of sin all around us. This has given John and the rest of the disciples with him complete joy in putting this into writing because they know that the reader, who is a believer, will be guided and clarified by it. Very importantly, it was written to assure the disciples then and us now that as believers and followers of the Son of God, our Lord Jesus Christ, God himself in the nature of the Son, became man, lived with us, and has in fact attained for us through his perfect sacrifice and death on the cross, the forgiveness of our sins and eternal life with him in heaven. And as he resurrected from the grave and is now seated at the right hand of the Father in heaven. That is the gospel of the Lord, the good news of our Lord Jesus Christ. studying the Bible. Play this again and listen and learn. Here is AJ and her siblings as they bring to us a song of a good, good father. Let us sing, rejoice, and reflect of the goodness of God and His love for us, His children. Oh, oh, oh. 
God is a good, good Father. And for our Bible point for today is that God's Word teaches us about our identity in Christ. Again, God's Word teaches us about our identity in Christ. And our memory verse for today is found in 1 John 3 verse 1 which says, See what kind of love the Father has given to us, that we should be called children of God. And so we are. The reason why the world does not know us is that it did not know Him. Again, 1 John 3 verse 1, See what kind of love the Father has given to us, that we should be called children of God. And so we are. The reason why the world does not know us is that it did not know Him. What is identity? How do we define our identity? David Benner, a psychologist and author of the book, The Gift of Being Yourself, defines identity as who we experience ourselves to be, the I each of us carries within. Sometimes we feel pressured to define ourselves. We define ourselves through our jobs, our financial status, successes, grades, how we look, what people say, and so many things. But the next question is how do we see ourselves? Identity is also about how God sees us. According to Ephesians 1, we have been blessed with every spiritual blessing. We have been chosen, adopted, redeemed, forgiven, grace, lavish, and unconditionally loved and accepted. We are pure, blameless, and forgiven. We have received the hope of spending eternity with God. When we are in Christ, these aspects of our identity can never be altered by what we do. Hey there, Kid Lifers! Thanks so much for joining us in another fun-filled, God-centered episode here on GCF Kids Life. Make sure to check out our Facebook page at GCF Kids Life. And please like the page and share the amazing content we post each and every week. Also, please do subscribe to our YouTube channel called GCF Kids Life and feel free to share those amazing videos with your friends as well as those who do not know Jesus yet. And if you have a prayer concern or something you would like to share with us, kindly email us at kidslife at gcf.org.ph or if you're shy, just message us via Messenger and we'd really like to hear from you. So remember about the Facebook page I was telling you about earlier? Well, on Saturdays, we have our activity where you have different activities and things which can train you to become a missionary for the Lord. This is posted every 12 noon, so make sure to check it out. Next, on Mondays, we have our activities for the little ones. This way, you are preoccupied with activities even during this lockdown. Yes, there are songs, crafts, and fun things to do. On Tuesdays, 
we have our memory verse, our Bible point, and the markings to further cultivate your study of God's Word. On Wednesdays, we get to see some of our kids as they share their experiences during this pandemic and how their faith in God has been strengthened. This is called Hashtag A Kid Lifer's Heart. It's really amazing to hear from these kids. You too can write there. Just get in touch with us via messenger or via email. On Thursdays, we have our Thursday Thoughts where parents share their stories and experiences despite the difficulties brought by the pandemic. And on Fridays, we get to meet our teachers. This is the Friday feature where we get introduced or even reintroduced to our ohanas or our family. And there you have it. Thanks for joining us, kids, and we hope to see you again next week. Keep it here on Kids Life and make sure to invite a friend or two so that we can share the love of God with others. God bless you.